This is the story of a woman who has devoted all the rest of her life in search of some kind of justice for the horrific killing of her son, Michael William Arnold. In excess of 300 rounds fired at him. Never been hit 165 times, 55 fatal. Hello people, this is Chuck Searcher, and this is Justice Matters. This is the first of a four-part series that we will be presenting on this event. And let me tell you, it's a horrific event, and we hope that you will bear with us. Hello, I'm Constance Flo, a lifelong activist. I'm a self-appointed mother warrior, and I'm the mother of the victim. Okay. This happened years ago. Uh, exactly when did this happen? This happened on March the 27th, 1998, on the streets of Hawthorne Boulevard in California. This happened in L.A. A lot of time has passed since we filmed this, and how could we have known that we would have known that all of us would eventually find ourselves in the middle of a pandemic? But now we have set our fears aside and we're releasing this to the world. And God, I hope YouTube does not censor this. And my apologies for the low production values here, but this is just a few of us trying to get this story out while Granny Annie still lives and breathes. I'm Ted Gunderson, retired FBI chief, Los Angeles, California. After serving more than 27 years service, at the time of my retirement, I had over 700 personnel under my command, a budget of $22.5 million, and 16 offices. On March the 27th, 1998, the singularly most egregious use of deadly force by law enforcement ever perpetrated against a U.S. citizen occurred in the streets of Los Angeles, California. And uh, this never really made mainstream news, and so now we're putting it out there for all of you. Now this story starts, I'm going off a storyboard here of the uh, movie that was never made, and uh, we're going to run you through what happened here. Uh, this was uh, late at night, on the freeway, it's on the... About, about, two in the, about two in the morning. And uh, your son was on the freeway and... On his way to the L.A. airport. She went on to say that he was feeling disoriented and he'd called his wife and they had made arrangements for her to come and pick him up. And then the cops showed up. And that's when everything proceeded to go south. Dosed, Mickey, or whatever it's called, he found himself surrounded by an armada of police cars on the freeway there, and, and telling, ordering them to follow them. And he was surrounded, front, back, and both sides, and led on the freeway three miles to the next exit. And when he exited, the, the whole six lanes were filled with car, police cars. Only one lane was open, and the police led him down that lane, three more blocks to 121st. Okay, we'll be posting this up for the viewers. This, this will also be posted at our blog site. All of this documentation for you to review. When he arrived, when he arrived, now there was talk on the radio, the, the transmission between the police, talk, talk of the kill zone. They were talking about the kill zone. Take it to the kill zone. It was already established, the kill zone. The city lights had been ordered turned out at 121st Street. So the only lights were from the, the cops' headlights and searchlights. And he was led to that spot and ordered to turn off at the main boulevard on the 121st and exit his car. And there were over a hundred black and white cars there from five different small 
local cities. Over 100 cars. Two SWAT teams waiting for him there. The city lights blacked out. The police had gone from door to door through the community before he got there, telling the, the, the residents to stay off their porches, get off the streets, and stay away from their windows and doors. So it sounds like he was led right down into there, wasn't he? He was led into the kill zone. We will led, provide some pictures of this. Led into the kill zone, ordered from his car, at which time they said, get out of your car with your hands up, which he did. And they said, come walk to the middle of the street, which he did. And they were yelling at him. And he was from different locations. And all these bright lights in his face and cops yelling at him from different locations. And, but meanwhile, the locals, because of the community, Inglewood, they were used to their own being harassed by the police, being shot to death by the police. So the community was not quietly behind their curtains. They were behind their curtains with binoculars, with cameras, to make uh -huh. sure that it wasn't one of their own who was being killed by the police. So it turned out that there were a lot of local eyewitnesses to this event, to every inch of it. In the beginning, there were eyewitnesses. Yes. yes. And they had been ordered to go into their house before he ever got there and to close their windows and curtains and stay up their balconies. Handy way to uh, not have eyewitnesses from the state. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes so, indeed. Yeah. Okay, so now we see he raises his right hand because of all the glare he's trying to see. He's trying to shade his eyes. Yes. Okay, the viewers can see this. Now, we start leading into the hard part here. Eight he minutes. He was unable to uh, see beyond the glare. Puts his hand up, he shifts his weight, and he begins to turn. Yeah, they told him to turn his back to them. Turn his back to yeah. them? Yeah, they told him to turn around. Interesting. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, it might be about time for us to take a break, and then we're going to move into the truly awful part of the story. Now we get into the messy part, and uh, it's going to be up to you to describe this. This has been very hard to put all this together, but here we go. Now let me add here, they're talking about her son, which was a very intelligent man, a businessman working in the computer world, driving a Lincoln town car, well-dressed man down the freeway, just so that they know that. Go ahead. Never been in trouble a day in his life, uh, had all kinds of degrees was a, a gentle soul who carried his old blind dog around in his arms, who paid people's hospital bills, people's education he, he provided. He was a good, good soul, but that's all beside the point. It doesn't matter what his, he was to begin with. What matters is how he was killed. Now let me interject one other thing. There was a BB gun because he had Dealt with varmints in his yard. He, he owned several properties. He was also in the real estate business. And he owned several properties and he kept a BB gun in the trunk of his car to shoot at worrisome coyotes, squirrels, pigeons who were on his properties. And yes, and I called the manufacturer, I contacted the manufacturer of this gun. He gave me all the information. They said, first of all, it is so benign that if you put the gun right to your arm and pull the trigger, it will, the baby won't break the flesh. And yet, later he was found with one, when he was put on the autopsy table, one BB, one BB fell out onto the autopsy table. And the, <laughs> the ME who did the autopsy became my very good friend and ally. And she said to me, please don't ever let this go. Don't let this story go untold. Because I had never seen anything like this pass over my table. And God forbid I should ever have to see this again. Yes, and uh, we're not letting it go. It's been a lot of years, but here we are. So, he turned around. What happened next? 
what happened next was, as he put his hand up to shelter his eyes, because the bright lights glaring at his eyes, and he was being yelled out by a number of cops, and I got this information from the local eyewitnesses. He, he took his right hand and moved it like this to try to focus on one police car to understand what they were telling him. And they were yelling, turn around, turn around, get on the ground. And he, some of the eyewitnesses heard all of this. And when he put his hand like this, get up, get up. I can't see. See him, get him up. Don't shoot him up. The first bullet, the first bullet hit him right here, blew his brains out of the back of his head. For 27 godless seconds, the sounds of that thundering gunfire filled the night. The first police bullet entered my son's forehead right in his head. Seven more bullets tore his beautiful face to brush. Bullets penetrated his throat, his shoulders, his chest, his arms, his belly, his legs, his, his privates, his feet. There was not an inch of him left that was unhit by military military kind of weaponry. Just to give the people some perspective on this, go ahead, 27 seconds, let's let them know. 27 seconds, okay. they fired. In excess of 300 rounds fired at him. Never been hit 165 times, 55 fatal. His body reduced as described so painfully by his mother. Never before, no chance, have the shooters been white, black, Hispanic, Asian, male, and female. There are no wants on this victim and no criminal history. He never owned a gun, but he did own his home in Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles. The new Lincoln cow car he was driving. I'm a little bit speechless at the moment. I just, I can't even conceive of such a carnage. My it God, even in a time of war. There was nothing left of him but a pile of bloody gore on the streets, and they had shot him in the middle of the street. Four. And later, the police report says that he was barricaded behind his car, which was parked near the sidewalk. Sure. Well, only one, I went with my experts to the, to the garage where that car, his car, the Lincoln Town Car, was being held. And they searched it and did all their tests and found only one bullet had hit his car, one police bullet out of over 300 rounds fired. And yet he, in a police report, they claimed that he was barricaded behind it. But there's a reason why she's saying this, because the police report was, guess what, quite a bit different than what the true witness reports were. And uh, this also is just unbelievable. And now we're going to have to get into uh, the big cover-up of this whole scene. But here, he was shot over 100 times, so we're going to go ahead and let the people see some of this information. 165 bullets tore his body to shreds. There were at least 22 cops at Cut Loose on that we know of. Uh, they were then, classified as victims in the police report. Okay, now we're going to get into this cover up. Let's let the people see so they can get some perspective on this too. Okay, so we're talking about massive gunfire. We have here the official autopsy report that was done back then. We have a drawing of the trajectories of bullets which were flying everywhere, going into homes, houses, and uh, into uh, businesses, you name it. This was the Okay, and this was done by the coroner. It says here, uh, Total number of all injuries, entry and exits, 165. Minimal number of entry wounds were 106. 55 of them fatal. 51 approximately non-fatal. Head and neck injuries, seven with eight entries fatal. Torso, 
50 entries, 47 fatal. Right upper, 5 left, 5. Right lower, 23. Left lower, 16. So when she says he was shot to pieces, you better believe it. It's all on record. And shot to death in the middle of the street. Not Check this out, folks. This car. So we're all on the block side. So now we get back into this cover up, which she has uh, mentioned. And uh, it says here bullets traveling, penetrating dumpster, parked trucks, and lot, and buildings behind. These are our cops, people. Some of the police bullets went as far as three blocks away and went through the outer and inner walls of the sleeping family's home. Uh, I wish we had more time to uh, cover this more thoroughly, but we're getting it out to you. And if there are filmmakers out there, publishers, writers, take note. Here's something you can sink your teeth into. So we hope you'll stick with us for the next part, and we're going to get deeper into all the crimes these cops committed. And every single link is backed up with hard evidence. All right, so we're going to stick a link right up here for the second part. Click on it, and we hope to see you there. Now we have a message that goes out. Uh, excuse me, COVID. Uh, we have a message for all production companies, podcasters, university students, researchers, what have you, cops, and especially justice systems. If you have a, another narrative on this, let us know. If you can help with this production, we need your help. Contact us down below. Folks are going to want to hear the rest of the details. And when we start turning over rocks, you're going to want to see what comes crawling out. So you need to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And tell us what you think. Leave a comment down below. Folks, this is one for the history books. This story should be out there for the study of students, psychologists, you name it. I don't know what in the name of God caused this, but share this. This will be uploaded under Creative Commons. Feel free to upload it. and give credit to the channel. Thank you, and we'll see you later.